Hey everybody, this is John, and welcome to the free video. For uh, today, I mean, we've got monthly expiration, right? Tomorrow is Thursday, and then we've got Friday, and monthly expiration typically is choppy. Um, we got the mother of all pit bull lows, is what it's looking like on Thursday. And if we look at the squeeze here, there's the possibility that this could fire off, you know, uh, higher, and we go to 60, 70. Um, or we had this flop, and then this is just the kind of the death roll before we go to new lows. And it's honestly not super clear here. And anytime something's not super clear, I don't have a position on it. So right now on the queues, I don't have a position. But if I look at Amazon, this is something where I'm in the process of looking for areas to set up call credit spreads, i.e. a bearish play. If I look at IWM, uh, we've got a bearish play on this with put debit spreads, okay? Because the chart patterns on them are, they've triggered sell signals, they've triggered bearish signals. On the other hand, we can look at something like, like, like Bizen, right? And Bizen doesn't necessarily care what's going on right now in the NASDAQ or what's going on in the S&Ps. It's, it, it's on its own planet. So that's the kind of stock that I want to be long, or WDAY. So both Bizen and WDAY are long positions that I have in this market. So again, I'm looking at the NASDAQ and Amazon's negative while Apple's positive. To me, that looks like chop. So yeah, I could sell some iron condors in the queues, but I'm really looking more for directional plays. So here, I'm focusing on bearish setups on things like IWM and Amazon that are showing sell signals, but bullish setups on stocks like Bizun and WDAY that are showing bullish signals, okay? And and for me, that's just kind of the, the easiest way to do this market. If we're looking at, you know, other asset classes, we can see that the bond market here is continu continuing to consolidate with a squeeze. And then, of course, the yen is something I like to keep an eye on. Keep in mind that, you know, when the yen spikes up and that the spike up correlated with our sell-off last Thursday, okay, you're going to see markets under pressure. So the question is, here we are now at support from here, you know, are we going to go quiet? Because if it does spike up and make new highs, then we're looking for the S&Ps to roll over and make new lows. So keep an eye on the yen. The correlation here not only is very strong, but the yen is actually moving faster than the stock market. It's giving us a heads up what's going to happen, okay? All right, so one question that's come up a lot in this current market is if there's uncertainty, do we just stay in cash, okay? Or, you know, do we hedge? You know, what's the best way if there's not alignment everywhere? And one of the things I like to do is well, I, you know, there's different ways to look at it, but it's, it's follow the volume, right? It's follow the, it's not even the volume, it's follow the conviction, okay? And and when there's, wherever there's conviction, like wherever there's conviction that a large fund or a, a large group of people is right or wrong, like they're scrambling to get into a position or they're scrambling to get out of a position, there's opportunity, okay? And, I'll, well, let me show you what I mean real quick. So we were, we were talking in the room today and just kind of joking and someone was saying like, hey, can we find another one of those million dollar Tesla trades? And you know, don't get me wrong, it's great when it happens, but um, the, the main point of it is, is, is finding situations where this, this holds true. Because you're going to notice here on Tesla when this happened, okay, there wasn't a squeeze. Squeezes don't tell you when if there's hey oh there's a sudden influx of buying or selling with conviction right a squeeze is a completely different trade it's just hey there's a lack of volatility and now there's volatility but if suddenly out of the blue based on news or based on you know a fund getting crushed or something like that there's you know i look for five criteria and those five criteria include you know um how fast is the how fast is the acceleration of the move um, how much greater than average is the volume, okay? Um, I mean, this list of things, and that's all designated in these bars. And so, you know, look, if it's a yellow bar, just stay out, right? Just get, don't don't even bother with it. And it's really helpful, especially for newer traders. Well, should I get in this? No, no, just stay out. 
And then if it's green with a dot, that's green with conviction, meaning that there's volume there, and it's meeting the momentum criteria, yes, get in. But look, if, if you don't get those sustainable dots, meaning that the volume is still there and it goes back to yellow, you get out. Small loss, right? You don't need to hang, hang on through this. And I thought this was really important, especially after Thursday. It's like, well, if it's not working, you don't need to wait for a big sell-off like that. Just get out early. But then more importantly, when you recognize in this case that it meets the criteria of momentum plus volume, and I like this because typically if I'm looking at something like this, you know, I'm looking at five freaking indicators below my chart, which frankly are hard to watch. It's like, okay, what's going on here? What's going on here? What's going on here? What's going on here? And what's going on here? And if those are all doing what I want, then I can get in and buy it. And instead, now, you know, this tool here just makes that visually um, easy to follow. So. On the webinar, I'm not. This is not just going to be about this, but you know, part of looking for trades like this and, and this tool, and and it'll it'll be pretty fun. So on this webinar, so yes, we're going to be talking about some of the specifics around you know that trade and and why it worked and how to look for it, but also. Yeah, if you guys have not did not know this, years that end in seven for the past seventy years have all seen serious declines in September and October. Okay, and you can use tools like this and other things to look for some black swan implosions between now and October. Now that doesn't mean that they're going to happen, but if they do happen, this is what you want to look for. This is how you want to play it. Okay. Um, and then also just kind of essentially just, you know, the ways to set up for what I would call these potential, you know, 10x moves that have a lot of conviction and how to maximize that. Because what's happening is we're getting into that time of year where what we've seen over the last year is a kind of a nice, slow, steady bull market, you know, with these violent dips. And what we're going to get into, I think, is going to be more violence to the upside and to the downside. And... I love those kind of markets, but if you're not prepared for it, you're going to get your head handed to you. And so we just want to have the right things to look out for and the right tools to, you know, not only not get run over by it, but to completely maximize the opportunity. All right, so this webinar, it's a free webinar, will be Thursday. Wow, I thought I was going to circle that. That didn't work, too, work out too well. It's going to be Thursday, August 17th at 5 o'clock Pacific. That's 7 Central, 8 Eastern. And um, you can click on this, and I will see you there. You guys have a great night, and looking forward to seeing you at the webinar and uh, showing you some pretty cool stuff.